Good evening. I've been working quite a lot on Vesk tool again the past week or so. I spent like over 10 hours every day uh, working on a new major change. So let me show you the setup I have on my desk here. Here are three different Vesks with different uh, firmware versions on them. And let's take uh, an old version of Vesk tool. This one is 1.21 and auto connect. And then you see this message. And uh, this can sometimes be quite annoying, especially if uh, you see this message in the Android version and you are out somewhere and it just updated over Google Play. And now I cannot do any configuration anymore. And uh, maybe you don't want to run the wizards now and maybe even forgot what the gearing and everything was. So let's disconnect this version and take Vesk Tool version 2. That is the new version. So it's actually, this was going to be version 130, but uh, there's so many changes. So I decided to bump the version up to 1.2 and connect again. Now we see a slightly different message. And it essentially says that, yeah, this is an old firmware, but it's uh, still working quite fine. Uh, or this version of Vest tool is still working quite fine with it. And uh, that is something I've been working on before that uh, you could, a lot of the commands would work, would be backward compatible, so you could stream real time data and so, but never the configuration. And uh, that, the reason for that was not that I wanted to, to aggressively push the, new, push the new firmware. The reason was that it is quite difficult to make the configuration backwards compatible. And one reason for that is that um, between the versions, I change a lot of parameters. New, new ones are added, old ones are removed. Some of them are changed, what they do and what options they have and so on. So in order to take that into account, then for every version of uh, the firmware, Vesk tool needs uh, more or less a different user interface. And that's essentially what to do here. So if you look in uh, general and advanced, for example, and now when they're not connected, uh, let's see. I think I'm in the wrong version, actually. It was not a different message. Uh, yeah, this is the correct version. And this is the different message we were supposed to see. So forget about the previous one. So let's go to general and advanced. And now, for example, you see I have a different num number of options here. And now we connect to the old firmware. And now the option changed. And what happened is that two of them disappeared. And one of them uh, got fewer options. For example, for the auxiliary output mode, we only have four options. And if we disconnect, so we get the latest one, we actually get five op options. And um, I will show you a quick uh, change log or a quick diff stat on uh, the latest version. And as we can see, essentially every single configuration page in Vestal has changed slightly. And uh, the large changes are in Vest interface and also in the uh, configuration parameters uh, that handles all the, uh, the XML configurations. And we can look a bit more into the details of uh, what I added here. So I don't know if you've seen this before, but all the configuration options in Vesk tool, they're actually described in XML files. And this is not the XML file that you can export and import. This is a different XML file that, for example, for the motor configuration, for every single parameter, it has uh, a, a long name and it has uh, a range and it has a description and it has some information on how it should be stored in the settings and you can get a, a preview for them. So all of this information is in an XML file and describes all the parameters and it also describes how they are serialized and deserialized. From this information we also generate a new, unique ID and we can also generate code for the firmware. It can uh, make a parser and deparser for the configuration. So what I added in now in this version is also this new tab up here which is grouping. So every configuration file that descri describes all the parameters 
also has uh, a bunch of groups and subgroups and parameters in every subgroup. And this is essentially how everything is organized in the user interface and where all the separators are. And uh, these are different for all the configurations. So if you look, for example, in uh, uh, if you look in the we're disconnected now. So if you look in general and advanced, then we should see more or less the same things that you see here. And what happens now when we connect to a, a, a VESC, it is that it will read the firmware version, see which one it is, and then it will look through all of those configuration files that VESC tool has, and if it finds one that is matching, it will reload that one, and then it will tell every single editor in the user face, interface to reload and uh, show the options for the old configuration. So this way we can not only serialize and deserialize it, we can also change all the options and we can get the correct descriptions and everything, uh, everything for them. I was considering kind of uh, doing a best effort in more merging them and uh, just have the latest interface. But uh, I decided to go all the way and add this information and make it uh, a lot more general. Interestingly, this also works for the app. And in the app it was actually easier because there we don't have uh, the pages, the configuration there. It's essentially a one-to-one -one match. See now I made it full screen. A one-to-one -one match to this grouping information here. So if you look at the groups, they are identical to here. And the subgroups for every group, they are identical as well, both for the motor and the app. And therefore the app can, uh, the VESC tool app, the app for the VESC and the VESC tool app, uh, the VESC tool app can just fetch this information and reload the user interface without me changing anything, even if I add or remove groups or rearrange a lot here. So uh, in, the desk to, in the desktop version, I might have to uh, do the editors manually. Uh, this is also a bit by choice because, for example, if you look at uh, the PBM generation, if you look at the throttle curve, we want to have a, the throttle curve displayed uh, where we added it. And uh, I haven't added that for the mobile version yet. Maybe we'll do something similar in the future, but this one has a bit more, uh, well, a bit, a bit extra arrangement. But this is taken mostly into account here. Uh, another example of this, for example, is that uh, the Vest is connected now, uh, did not have a support for the Balance app. So when we reconnect, all the settings here will be completely gone because they do not exist for this version. Uh, we can have a quick look at the configs that I've added now. Uh, so this version, this release, will have firmware 3.60 all the way to 3.65 in support. And I got those by just going to the git history and uh, getting the old configuration files. It wasn't as easy as just getting them. I also had to add this grouping information to every configuration file. And uh, to do that, I had to run a diff between the latest one and the one I added and based on the diff, update the grouping to make it match the current configuration. So that was a bit of work, but now all of them are there. And for the future, when the new firmware is out, then we already have this structure. So if I make a new one, I simply have to copy and paste this one and rename it and add the new parameters there. And uh, then automatically we have support for the new one and all the old ones. And hopefully this will uh, more or less entirely remove the need to keep uh, for some reason old Vestal versions around, you can always have the latest one and the latest one can do everything with all the old firmwares that you could do with the previous version of Vest tool and you can possibly do more uh, as well if you add for example new options to log and things like that and you can take advantage of those if there are updates in Vest tool. But this is not all for this, uh, this update of Vest tool, there's also more. And I think this is also very important. This is uh, related to firmware updates and uh, remember configuration. So since we can read all the configurations of all firmwares, uh, we can also, before we update the firmware, backup them and write them back. So when you do an update, um, you would lose all the settings and then you have to run the wizards again. And in many cases, you don't, there's not really, if you had the old settings, there's not really a need to do that. So what I have added support for here is that when you are connected, even to an old firmware, you can go to config backup and backup configurations. 
and that it will scan the canvas for all VASCs and it will back up all the configurations for the unique IDs of every VASC and then the settings file that is for this local version of VASC tool has uh, a configuration remember and motor and app configuration remember for every unique ID of every VASC. Uh, we can uh, look at them in the desktop version like this for example and then when we do restore backup it will scan the canvas again and go through all the VASCs that it finds and restore them with the configuration for their unique ID. And the same thing you have in the app, of course, that uh, in the first page you can run the backups and you can restore the backups. And if it also asks you here so you don't tap on that by accident and uh, overwrite all the configurations. So I think this is uh, a rather nice feature. So this feature also with the app, then if it suddenly updates, you don't necessarily have to do anything because the new version can still do everything that the old version is good and possibly more. And if you do want to upgrade the firmware, which you probably should in most cases, then you can backup before you do and restore the backup and you don't have to run the wizards. It was, this was also a bit tricky to do because, uh, as you saw before, uh, the backups or the configuration versions do not always have uh, the same parameters in them. So what is actually done when you restore the backups is that it will load the, uh, the default configuration or the current configuration for the VASC and it will look at the backup and update all the options that are, that, um, are in the new configuration that were in the backup. So if the backup is missing some of them, then you get the default versions and in many cases that should be fine. When you have the time, it's probably good to maybe run the wizard, but in most cases you don't really have to. And I tried this on my dual motor longboard and it worked flawlessly. I went from 3.61 to 65 and uh, I just did a backup and restore and it just worked. So that was quite nice. Uh, there's also more that I added. Uh, today's VASC version and I think I want to mention something about this now because uh, uh, there was actually a regression in one of the firmwares. I can mention that uh, uh, regressions usually it has been at least since VASC tool went from being DC to VASC tool all the new firmwares who have always been better in every single possible way than the previous ones but uh, version 3.63 had actually a regression and 64 as a consequence of that. So uh, what this version of VASC tool has, or what the new versions will have, is that it has a database of old firmwares that can have some problematic behavior. So if you look at the cameras again, and we disconnect VASC tool, and we plug in, I believe it's the one, I'll do it right here. And we connect to this one. Then we see that we have this message again. And then we also see that this is version 3.64 and it has an, um, a bug in the PPM app which makes it consume a lot more CPU than it should, which can cause some problems, for example, with slow, uh, other threads that slow down, such as the CAN bus. And once they get known and you get the new version of VASC tool and uh, you connect, then you can could get the message like this. And uh, then you can update the latest version, which should have that fixed. So uh, I can mention a few things about what happened here. So uh, with this particular regression, this actually was before this uh, 363 and 364, I fixed it, but then I introduced this thing that I'm showing here. And what happened there is that uh, I added support for a new encoder that runs RS485. And uh, that bus needs, uh, it runs at 2.5 megabaud on the UART. So then that means that we need to increase the priority of the UART interrupt to be higher than the motor control inter uh, interrupt. And uh, when I did that, uh, I set it to higher than the cystic interrupt. And uh, it wasn't easy to figure out what uh, this would be a problem. And I don't know why this is a problem yet. I found an old thread on the GBOS forums about this. And I think uh, they asked, uh, Giovanni asked them about running without uh, 
uh, with simplified priorities as well, uh, because I, um, it doesn't didn't seem to be be like it sh- didn't suppose it wasn't supposed to be a problem, but apparently when you have the URT interrupt run at high priority, and you uh, you uh, you have an, a thread that waits for events, and the uh, URT interrupt wakes up that thread when it's waiting for int- events from the that from the URT interrupt, then it can make the threads. Uh, parameters to become quite inconsistent or a bit inconsistent and uh, this can get cause a thread or two to not execute even anymore even if they're in the ready state and uh, most of those things they should not really cause anything dangerous because uh, the vest has a uh, quite advanced uh, watchdogs now since uh, marcus has helped out a bit with that and i also jumped in so we actually have firmware integrity to check and we have uh, a thread that handles all the watchdogs, and this thread needs to get informa- uh, that needs to be uh, pulled by a bunch of other different important threads on a regular basis. And if that doesn't happen, then the VESC will reboot. And one of those important threads is actually the timeout thread, which will stop the motor if nothing has been uh, triggering the timeout in a certain time. So uh, if the timeout thread would die, then it would reboot. But uh, for example, if uh, something, if some app is connected and communicates and uh, triggers the timeout, which it shouldn't, the input should do that. And uh, for example, the PPM is running and then the PPM thread freezes and the timeout gets triggered that this could cause the throttle to get stuck. Or possibly that, uh, and there was also a problem in the PPM thread that if it would freeze, it could potentially still reset the timeout as that was done from an interrupt which then walk up the ppm thread so i moved that down to the ppm thread instead and that got fixed in this version here but i think other than that uh, uh, that was the only instance where this happened and uh, other than that it hasn't really happened until now in all of the years that vestal has been out which is since 2016 now i believe and i have added lots and lots of updates before so yeah hopefully i can keep this away but one thing i also took away from this issue is that uh, changing to interrupt priorities and uh, things like that that is uh, quite a major change and uh, maybe i should have a setup where i test things like that a bit more i did actually i usually test them quite a fair bit but it's not so easy to find something sometimes especially when it happens so rarely and it was under quite rare circumstances that it would cause a problem. It actually never happened to me. But, uh, yeah, that's that. And uh, this reporting is, uh, well, hopefully improving on that too, in a case something gets known about an old firmware that, uh, that had problems. So those are some quite nice changes, I think, overall. Um, you don't have to worry about updating VAS tool because you can still talk with all the old firmwares or at least on, down to 360 and I might even add more of them in the future. And um, when you update the firmware, you can restore all the settings, which makes it a lot more convenient, especially if you forget what your gearing ratios on is. So that's what I had for now. <laughs>